considering that you're here on the day when Masahiro Tanaka becomes a very well-paid rookie now in Major League Baseball, 25-year-old right-hander, looks like seven years and $155 million. Have you ever had to negotiate with any kind of foreign entities? We had a business in China for a number of years and did negotiating over there. Normally, what happens is that as Americans were so anxious to make the deal on that specific day at that time, and the Asian style of business is much more slow, they don't particularly care from a negotiating position whether it's done now, next year, 10 years from now, so it gives them an advantage. Um, I'm just angry that uh, the player's not coming to the Dodgers or the <laughs> Angels. <laughs> what is it like to be in that room where you have, let's say, five teams who are all vying for one guy and you're the agent representing that guy? Take us inside those conversations. What are they like? Well, when Warren Moon came back to the NFL, he had five NFL teams interested, Canada and USFL. Human behavior changes. People in a bidding situation, when they're competing, can go far above anything they anticipated paying. So it's a different concept. It's what will the market bear? And uh, so what they're attempting to do is to keep all those bidders in the picture. Because the more bidders, even if some are lower, uh, the more it keeps the uh, pressure on. And sometimes by setting a deadline, um, it brings things to, to fruition, but that's the most explosive negotiation situation imaginable. Great contracts can come. Lee, congratulations on the book, The Agent, and continued success. It really is a fun read, especially for people who are fans of all these great NFL players, and really your life story is amazing. Thank you. My pleasure. Let's bring in our senior writer, Tom Verducci, on the phone as we're talking about Masahiro Tanaka signing a seven-year, $155 million deal. And, Tom, this is the type of money that's usually reserved for pitchers who are Cy Young winners, and Tanaka hasn't even thrown one pitch in the majors. He'll be a rookie next year. Do you think he's worth this type of money? Well, he's worth it to the New York Yankees, and that's the key. There's really no surprise here. There are a lot of teams in the mix the Diamondbacks, the Astros, the White Sox, the Cubs, the Dodgers, of course. But most of those teams put his evaluation at about 100 to $120 million over six years. And the Yankees were not going to be outbid. So his value to the Yankees is more than any other team because the Yankees are so desperate with a barren farm system coming off a year in which their attendance was down. They didn't make the postseason. Uh, they could not go through a second straight season like they won, the one they had last year. So in Tanaka's case, the timing couldn't have been better. Uh, he walked into a desperate Yankee franchise that was willing to pay top dollar plus. Tom, did the money that the Yankees are now saving with the suspension of Alex Rodriguez for at least all of next season, did that play into this at all? No. Um, the Yankees really had, they predicated their whole business plan the last couple of years on getting underneath the $189 million luxury tax threshold. Whether Rodriguez was part of that or not, they were going to blow through that. They just did not have the discipline or, quite frankly, the farm system to stick to that kind of budget. So Tanaka was needed. He was part of the business plan the entire offseason, as were people like Jacoby Ellsbury and Brian McCann. Um, this is what the Yankees need to do. We saw them do this in 2009 after they failed to make the playoffs in 08, where they spent almost a half a billion dollars, and they've done it again, almost another half billion dollars to dig themselves out of a non-playoff year. Yeah, and they rebounded and won the World Series that year. But Tom, obviously the expectations for the Yankees are always sky high, but considering the moves that they've made in totality this offseason, what realistically should the expectation be for them this year? Well, they're at least in the mix now for a postseason berth. I still don't think they're better than Tampa Bay. I don't think they're better than Boston. Um, but at least now you can say they have a chance of missing the postseason. Um, listen, they don't have the best rotation in the division right now. Uh, there's questions at second base, third base, shortstop. You want to include the health of Derek Jeter, uh, back end of the bullpen, this does not make them a playoff team definitively as we sit here in the middle of January, but it does at least give them a chance. And now once they've blown past the $189 million threshold, they might as well just obliterate it and get into a payroll into the mid-200s if they have to because the, 
the chance of getting and resetting that luxury tax rate from 50% to 17%, that's gone. And by the way, you know, when you talk about 155 for, for Tanaka, it's actually you have to add on a $20 million for the posting fee, and now with a 50% tax rate, that's another $77 million. In other words, you're paying $1.50 for every dollar on Tanaka. It's basically a $250 million investment for somebody who's really a number two pitcher we don't know can pitch in the big league. Hey there, SI fans. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our daily live show, SI Now. You can find a link to the complete episode. It's just 30 minutes long in the description box below. And while you're there, make sure to subscribe to Sports Illustrated's YouTube channel. May not be the swimsuit channel, but just as exciting. Remember, you can watch SI Now Monday through Friday live at 1 p.m. Eastern time only on SI.com. There may be a swimsuit model there. We'll see you.